Hello guys, my name is Dr. Lee, also known as Dr. Pimple Popper, and I'm here to answer all your acne questions. What does an acne consult with a dermatologist actually consist of? I can't speak for all dermatologists, but I bet many of them are similar to what I do. Usually I'll, you know, sit down and get to know the patient a little bit, but I'll also, what are really key points for me is figuring out first what their lifestyle is, what type of skin they have. I often ask, is this day that they present to me, is this a good day, a bad day, or a regular day? Are there things that make it worse or better? Um, maybe it's also useful to find out whether they have family members like a mother and father or aunts and uncles that had bad acne because a lot of this has to do with your genes and the type of skin that you have and also the time you are in life and also the things that you might do like a violinist who you know rests their instrument against their chin all the time it wouldn't be uncommon to see acne in that area or a football player that has really big pads and they sweat on, on their body to have acne pretty extensive acne on the back all these are really useful pieces of information for me to have the most important point i think is that to, for people to know that yeah acne doesn't threaten our lives but it definitely threatens our emotional or mental stability you know it's hard to have bad acne and be able to function as a normal human being in the world. It really makes us feel very self-conscious and um, doesn't make us feel as happy when we have a bad breakout, right? So don't be fearful of going to see your dermatologist. Certainly not everybody has access to, to a dermatologist. Not everybody has the time to be able to see a dermatologist, but that's what we're here for. We're here to help you with your skin um, and we've been trained to do so. Uh, that being said, sometimes um, there's a long wait time to see a dermatologist. So just be patient, make your appointment. And in the meantime, there are definitely great over-the-counter products to use that can help you with your skin and that can maybe even solve your problem before you get to your appointment with your dermatologist. That's why I created my SLMD Acne System because these are products that I myself recommend to my own patients in my own office. And maybe you can start with that and see whether that clears up your acne. Yeah, this is a common thing that we hear as dermatologists. It can happen in men and in women. I tend to see it more in women, and that's because of our hormones. We tend to get surges of hormones during certain times of the month, and uh, that's when we'll see more acne breakouts. And a lot of women lament that, you know, they're like 50, 60, you know, and they're still getting acne bumps. And, you know, that's okay. I actually feel like it's a sense of reassurance that uh, you still have oil in your skin, you still have hormones, you're still, you still young and youthful and you still have young skin. Because once, you know, all that is over, then we're all dried up and, you know, just like wrinkled and shriveled like a, like a prune. <laughs> this sounds so sad. <laughs> I know. But I digress because, you know, it's the same kind of acne, you treat it the same way. Um, you, as when you were older, we tend to be less oily, so maybe we don't have to be as aggressive with our treatments, which is really when over-the-counter acne treatments can really help because, you know, some of the medicated treatments are super strong and can be very drying and irritating. And a lot of the over-the-counter products are gonna be a little bit more gentle on your skin. Why is picking pimples so bad for your skin? I mean, if you don't know the answer to that, then I, I, I don't know what to do anymore. Picking pimples is not great because you can go overboard and all of a sudden you are staring at yourself and you've gouged a, a big hole in your skin, which is would be the worst thing that could that I feel like I can help you to prevent. You know, I, I'm, I would worry about you doing this in the confines of your home. And, and a lot of people, you know, can't help themselves, myself included. So, you know, I think that the most important point is it's a normal phenomenon. I mean, I think a lot of us, myself included, if I have a big pimple, it's really hard to keep your hands off of it. So you have to sort of make yourself not pick at things. There are really wonderful ways to do this, like using a spot treatment, a benzoyl peroxide or a salicylic acid spot treatment, putting a dollop on that really angry pimple it helps keep your hands off of it. It helps to remind you because a lot of times absentmindedly we might reach up and start picking at a pimple and not even realize we're picking at it until it's bleeding. Another great thing to do is like a pimple patch. 
Um, there are, I have a spot check, which is like a little band-aid that's impregnated with salicylic acid. So it's actually going to cover it, keeping it out of sight, but actually actively treat it at the same time. So there's really great ways in which you can combat the feeling of wanting to pick at a pimple. Is it more dangerous to pick pimples by your nose? I mean, is this Triangle of death. A real thing? Well, it sounds really like dramatic and um, there is a reason for it, but I don't think we see a lot of like, um, you know, news alert in, in, in newspapers. Another person has died from picking a pimple in the triangle of death. So luckily we don't see a lot of that. We don't see any of that really. Um, but yes, there's this triangle that's from like the, the um, borders of our mouth to like right here, the glabella. And we call that the triangle of death because to make a long story short, it has to do with the fact that if you have a pimple or inflammation there, it's the closest to this part of our, our right below our brain that like has a lot of important vessels on it. And if it swells in that area, there are important vessels that affect our eyesight and important nerves and things like that. So if that area gets really swollen, it can compromise other functions of your head, you know, or your brain or your body. So um, technically, yeah, you could get into big trouble if you have a big abscess or a big pimple that goes bonkers here. But a lot of us get pimples there and I haven't heard of anyone really expiring from this.